take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Hello and welcome to another episode of Southgate Real Talk. I am your host for this podcast, Robert Montalvo. As always, I like to begin these episodes by thanking you. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading this podcast. Uh, without you, I'm not here. I totally rely on you for uh, subjects that we talk about. And again, thank you so much for, for making this podcast number one here in Southgate. Again, uh, the email address is SouthgateRealtalk at Yahoo.com. And you can also message or comment on Facebook.com forward slash Southgate Real Talk. Again, that email address is SouthgateRealtalk at Yahoo.com. I just wanted to share something with you guys. Uh, I was recently uh, given a title here in Southgate as an influencer. Um, a lot of uh, folks out there were were telling me this I didn't even know it and um, I honestly didn't know what that meant and as far as I can tell it just means that people listen to what I'm talking about and and that's probably because you get nothing but facts and truth here you know we don't pull any punches here and and again and this is all because of you so again thank you all uh, for for making this podcast such success and um, yeah, and I will continue to to bring you information, um, you know, as truthful as as it's out there, just plain facts. Being this influencer, I guess, is is kind of strange now because it's gotten to the point that it's influencing what the city does here in Southgate. Like I I know I don't have a lot of fans at City Hall, and it's to the point where they. Uh, they actually started trying to recruit people to do podcasts in Southgate, probably just to dummy down the market or something out here, because uh, they don't—they want to throw some misinformation out. I guess, who knows, right? I just thought that was kind of funny uh, when I did see that posting by the city, by the powers that be over there, uh, probably feeling threatened that so many people are learning. And hearing the truth for the first time about what goes on uh, behind the doors and the walls at at City Hall, which uh, brings me to a the topic that one of the topics that we're going to be talking about today, which is the brown water here in Southgate, and it, it is actually being called now um, Southgate's dirty little secret, which is that toxic water that that we have here in Southgate. Uh, a, a problem that I've been talking about for quite some time already here on this podcast. So this will be part two and a follow-up on that because many of you actually had many questions about uh, the the brown water, the, the Southgate sweet tea, like it's commonly uh, known as here in Southgate. And, uh, you know, it looks like uh, Crazy Robert over here in this podcast isn't so crazy after all, because the city just admitted that we do have contaminated toxic water here in Southgate to the point where they're trying to kind of do a sneaky, in-the-dark kind of maneuver by putting an item on the consent calendar uh, for the next meeting here in Southgate, which is on uh, this coming Tuesday, uh, December the 9th. And it's uh, item number 7. On the agenda and this is regarding well number 23 here in Southgate and uh, just looking into it um, these are just some some facts of what's actually causing the water to be brown in here now there's one particular um, uh, contaminant with that toxic water and um, that's known as uh, manganese. This water, uh, this causes water to become brown, 
are discolored, even even a, like a dark brown, like a coffee brown. This also causes cancer. This also causes reproductive problems. This is something that the city has known about for years. And they turned a blind eye to it until we start talking about it, until you hear about it here and in postings. And, and again, uh, just want to give a quick shout out to uh, uh, Mr. Thomas Buckley over at the, at the scanner page for, for allowing me to share some, some of this information on, on a posting uh, regarding this water uh, situation. Because for the city to try and sneak this by on a consent calendar item without any discussion is a typical cover-up move. They know this water is contaminated that they're giving to people. They know this water is toxic. Toxic water. You know, are they giving it to their kids, to their grandkids? Are they drinking it? Of course not, because they know it's toxic. And they feel just fine having everybody else bathing, drinking it, giving it to their kids, to their pets. And you know, that that doesn't sit right with me and it shouldn't sit right with you that they're doing this, letting it go by and um, and just not even acknowledging it. I mean, there's hundreds of postings on on social media alone of of the of this brown water, the Southgate tea. And they're tip like from their surrogates that come out here, like they're 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 little uh robots or whatever, they're cheerleaders, whatever you want to call them. Um, they come out here uh, on these social media postings and try to defend uh, what's being said, like try to deflect and, and do whatever they can to, to change the subject. But the bottom line is the city of Southgate knew this water was toxic. They know it's toxic. There's no question about it now. By them, at City Hall, Maria Davila, the mayor, the city council, the staff, knowingly had this water coming to residents here in Southgate. There's no question about that now. And now they're trying to cover their butts with this, with this item number seven that's on the agenda. And if I sound a little upset, it's because I am. This is... This is uh, we cannot let people get away with this, especially when they know. So they're going to try and close this well, kind of like a hush-hush type of thing. Hopefully nobody uh, pays attention to it. Well, I'm sorry, City of Southgate, but I'm paying attention to it. And I'm letting people know about it. And I hope enough people hear this, call in and hold all of you accountable for all this Toxic water that you're letting folks drink and, and bathe in and give to their kids and their pets. So, this item number seven that's on here, this toxic water agenda item that they're sneaking by on the consent calendar. This item, I mean, just the jargon that they have on here, the way it's written, it's like 109 pages of, of technical data. Or technical wording. Like, so regular people are not going to read a 109 page uh, uh, agenda item report, a staff report. You know, unfortunately for Southgate, I do read them and I do follow up on, on these reports that you're hiding. These wells get tested every quarter. Where are the results? If there's nothing wrong, why don't they post these results for everybody to see? Why don't they break down everything so everybody can understand? Because they know they're doing wrong. They know they're covering up this toxic water problem we have in Southgate. You know, you never see these problems happen in Beverly Hills, on the west side, in more affluent areas. No, well, let, let's hit a poor area like Southgate pay off all these city council people so they can control the staff over in Southgate and let all these polluters run rampant over here 
doing whatever the hell they want and then they want to cover up this toxic water that they're feeding to everybody. And you know what's even worse about that? Is that we're paying for the water. We are paying them to poison us with this toxic water. We're literally paying them to give us cancer. We're paying them to, ha to give us reproductive problems. We're paying them to give us a possibilities of, of birth defects with our children. Yeah, that, that's, that's not going to happen anymore. And, you know, I was, I was actually chatting online with some other, like, they're, they're surrogates that, that want to deflect. And, you know, I just had, had one question for them. Would you drink the water? And that's what you heard, silence, crickets. And then I asked another question. Okay, so this well's contaminated. It's groundwater. You know, it's proven fact that one well can contaminate another well. What are they doing about that? They're not doing squat, nothing, nada. After finding out this information that I, that, that I received about this, I'm not going to lie. I was livid about it for as long as it's been going on and even more pissed off at the fact that they would put it on a consent calendar as a consent calendar item and try and sneak it by. Like nobody's going to notice it. And a consent calendar item, just in case you're not familiar with, with the way the, the, the agenda works, they like to put a bunch of stuff like this, like uh, uh, this, this toxic water issue, and they like to bunch it up and do one vote on it without even going through it, without even uh, having any discussion about it. Well, not today. This item is going to be pulled and you guys are going to talk about it. Southgate City Council will discuss it. And they will talk about toxic water and admit to what's going on here in Southgate. Admit to what they're covering up. You know, they like to... Uh, uh, try and and and, de and deflect, slander me, and say things because obviously I'm speaking the truth about it. They're not denying it. I have yet to see one one statement saying that I am wrong from the city of Southgate. There's none because they know what I'm saying is true. What they should do is have a public forum like a town hall setting, even if it's online, and explain everything to the public, explain everything to the citizens of Southgate that are getting this water, explain what contaminants are in this toxic water, what carcinogens are in this water, the effects of them, what they're doing about it. But they don't want to do that because they, they, want, they want everybody to to look at that report, that 109 pages, and just say, forget about it. And they, they want everybody to complain online, because then they can say, we didn't know about it. Nobody complained to the city. Knowing full damn well that there's toxic water that that's coming out of your pipes, going, going through your faucet. And they have the nerve to say that, oh, the city's flushing the pipes. Uh, it's the the person has old pipes in their house. You know what? I would take that as a, I would take that excuse if it was a couple of people. We got a couple of hundred people complaining about this. this. This is more than than pipes. This is more than just flushing a hydrant. This is a problem that the city of Southgate knows about, and I always picture one of our seniors drinking this water, having already pre-existing health problems that were probably caused by this water. I mean, how many people got cancer from this water that we, that we, we don't know? We just don't know. You know, they call me crazy for, for saying this, that there's nothing going on, the water's fine. Well, guess what? Why are they closing that well? Because it has toxic water. That's why they're closing the well. It's amazing the, the lengths they'll go to to cover up a lie. And I'm holding the, the mayor of Southgate, Marina Davila, personally responsible for this because she's known about this 
for decades, literally decades already, and has done nothing about it. She is the mayor right now. Why isn't she saying anything about it? Why isn't she, why isn't she stepping up and informing the residents about it? If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. Prove me I'm wrong. But they won't because they know I'm right. I'm trying to sneak by while you're asleep on a consent calendar, a dirty, toxic well spewing out all this toxicity into your faucets to give to your children, for you to drink, to give to your pets, to bathe in, to wash your clothes in. And the city of Southgate knows about it. I'll be right back. And welcome back. Uh, This next subject is something that I received a lot of emails and messages on. And that subject is city of Southgate spending, specifically how the city council spends money here in Southgate, uh, our taxpayer money. Uh, One question that was asked several times was about the mayor, Maria Davila, and Botox. And, you know, I was listening in on that meeting. I was present at that meeting. And a couple of, uh, two or three people had asked about that, if, uh, if Mayor Davila was using uh, taxpayer funds to pay for her Botox. And, you know, I, I personally, I don't think that's true. But then again, nothing surprises me. And even the, the city auditor, uh, Pilar Avalo, said that she hadn't seen anything and that uh, Jackie Acosta, who's in finance, if that ever came up, um, she would let us know uh, right away. But again, you know, I I don't see that. And I don't think Maria Davila is using taxpayer money to pay for her Botox at all. I mean, I, but then again, nothing surprises me. I just don't, don't see that, that happening. So I hope that answers that on the city spending. Um, there, there is a, there is some things that, that the city does like some of their habits. And one of those is going outside of Southgate to get services, uh, and, and products and stuff like that. You know, I think they should they should take take a page out of other cities' practices and go within first. Like check with businesses and and people here in Southgate before you go outside. Uh, we have a lot of talented people out here, professionals. Uh, you know, recently, um, the Mayor Davila uh, contracted with a uh, um, a marketing PR company to make videos. Uh, for for the city council, um, you know that's upwards of thirty five thousand dollars from what I've been told. You know I haven't seen the contract yet. I don't have all the the hard numbers right now, but that's that's a ballpark figure of what I was told. And you know I immediately thought like we have a professional videographer living here in Southgate. Um, his name is uh, Thomas Buckley. You probably know him, but you know what he does pretty damn good work he's it's he's a, a certified professional at this and looking at the videos that we did get from this company that they contracted with you know it looks like they're in a dungeon you know some people have like a, a little extra oil on their skin and and it and the lighting and stuff they had just enhances it like the videos the people in there they just look all sweaty like like kind of like dingy kind of thing and it's so dark look it looks like they're in a dungeon and and it's just force and with a teleprompter that they were that especially like the mayor was reading from it, it just it just looked terrible and you know i've seen thomas's work and you know it's night and day i mean there, there's literally no comp no comparison there i mean i know it would we would have got better uh a better result and I can almost guarantee we would have probably got a better price had they contacted him first you know he has done uh, videos for the Southgate Police Department he's even done work for the city of Downey so I don't think references were a problem 
it's just a mindset that they have where they don't even consider looking for businesses or professionals that we have here in Southgate, which is what they should do. I mean, they go outside even to buy business cards. It may seem a little trivial, but, you know, we have businesses here in Southgate, printers that do that kind of work, and we should be giving those businesses in Southgate first. And they just don't do that. And it's across the board with a lot of things, even with funding. You know, there was a, um, there was a resident here in Southgate that kept asking almost every city council meeting to bring some of the funding that is outsourced to other cities to Southgate. Yeah, that was me. I would go and, and ask them, we have mental health facilities here. We have nonprofits here. Why are we not giving them the funding for the residents here in Southgate? You know, before, if you had an issue like a mental health issue, you'd have to go to Whittier. You'd have to go to all these crazy places. And being that we're low income, most of these people that were seeking this help you know, they they couldn't afford the gas. They couldn't afford to take the bus over there. You know, luckily, they, they started um, bringing those resources to uh, businesses and nonprofits here in Southgate. But they need to do more. And they need to get out of that mindset of spending outside the city rather than spending inside the city first. And, you know, some of it has to do with with the favors that they owe to other people and and personal vendettas they have against, I guess, certain folks here in Southgate and friends that they might have. So it, it's instead of doing the right thing, they're taking it to a personal level, and and that's just not the way they should do it. And that's just a, another dirty little secret that they don't like talking about but it does happen and they honestly need to look at our businesses and professionals here in Southgate first before you know they look elsewhere I'll be right back and welcome back uh, this next segment is by far the most popular one this is a where I read your questions and try and answer them. So let's get started. Our first one comes from Ricardo. Uh, Ricardo writes, Thanks for all the info. Thanks for the heads up. I like the podcast. Can't wait to see what's next. Well, thanks a lot, Ricardo. I appreciate it. I do try my best on it. Uh, Next one is from Manny. Uh, Manny says... How many times do I need to call the police department on my neighbors for having a party? Uh, and there's a couple of cuss words in there. I won't read those. But uh, basically, it depends on, from what I understand, it depends on time of day, uh, how many calls they have on that particular day, because they, they go by a priority. And from what I understand right now, uh, they're not enforcing the... Um, the stay-at-home orders right now. So, I mean, I've called sometimes, and, you know, most of the time they, they come pretty quickly. So I guess it just depends on, on the workload they have on that particular time when you call. You know, obviously if you call, like, on a Friday night or Saturday night, I can tell you just they have so many calls coming in. Uh, I mean, I listen to the scanner, so I hear all these all the calls that are coming in. And... You know, sometimes they, they, they're, if they have a gunshot or, or some, other, an, some other assault or some other crime happening, you know, they're going to go to that first before they go to, uh, I'm assuming it's a neighbor's party um, that you're calling about. So I don't think it's because they don't care. I, they, I know that they go by a priority thing. So um, I hope that answers your question. And that, as far as I know, that's how that, that's how that um that process works. 
I mean, if you guys know more than I do, just let me know. I'll, I'll be happy to to follow up on it. Okay, the next one is from Susanna. And she says she lives off of Long Beach. She says, what can we do about our streets that are messed up? We're starting to look like Compton streets. Uh, I got a flat tire. Can I sue the city? Um, well, I mean, the city does have an app that you can use. Uh, you can also call in, um, I believe it's Arturo Cervantes. Um, that's the head of that department also. Um, but yeah, anytime I, I, I personally see um, a pothole, you know, the staff in that department is pretty quick on it. I mean, I, I've seen them even come like the same day that you call. But, you know, in a, in a city as big as ours, we, um, unless we kind of notify them about what, what problems we have or what's going on out there, chances are they're not going to know about it. But as far as suing them for your for your tire, I, you know, I don't want to give you any misinformation. You know, I would contact, I would contact the city about that and see see what you can do as far as uh, liability for your tire. You know, sorry that happened to you, but um, it's it's still it's kind of hard to to um, for anybody to know every pothole, you know, every crack that that's in in. Uh, in the city, I mean, I'll mention it at when I when I uh, attend city council meetings. You know, I'll mention cracks that I see uh, on streets or or any 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 issues. But you know, at the end of the day, it's really hard for for anybody to know exactly where, like I said, where every pothole is, where every crack in the in the sidewalks at, unless we we report it to them or let them know about it. And and as always, document everything. So I, I hope that works out for you. I mean, um, message me and, and let me know let me know what happens uh, with that. Okay, and the last one is from Erica. She sa- she writes, uh, "Why is the park not open? Where are we supposed to exercise? Can we still run around the track?" And I can't make out the rest. Uh, the <laughs> rest of this, but um, right now the park is closed, especially with the new governor's orders. Um, you can still exercise around the track on the side on the sidewalk portion of it, so you can run around. But as far as going inside the park, and that's and that's basically with any park right now, um, the parks are closed. And just with this COVID thing, uh, there there are some activities you can you can. Um, you can participate in like tennis, but you know, as far as just like regular picnicking or, or just hanging out, um, yeah, the parks are closed for that. And that's going to do it for this part of the segment, and I will be right back. <laughs> Well, that's going to do it for another episode. I appreciate you listening and, uh, and the downloads. Uh, again, the email address is SouthgateRealTalk at Yahoo.com. And we have these new COVID orders coming in. So I hope everyone stays safe. Uh, stay inside. Uh, try, uh, try and avoid contact. I mean, this, this COVID stuff is real. And if we don't get sick, we might you know, infect somebody else if we are asymptomatic with it. So we wouldn't want that. So until the next episode, I will see you later. God bless.